Hello and welcome to St David's here in Taravel. Our Gospel reading today from Mark describes the possibility of a faith that can grow within us and from the size of a seed to something so powerful it can sustain life. True faith will enrich our lives. It can bring us a deeper meaning to everything that surrounds us and all this develops from a seed of faith. That I'm working all things out So in the field of death Plant a seed of faith And I'll see the rain the He also said, 
This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Again he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet, when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the words to them, as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. God our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, in our day-to-day -day life, as we look around, we tend to think what we see is what we get. That's just the way the world works. It could be said that most of us take things at face value. If we get a smile off a stranger, on the whole, we accept it. We don't wonder why that person is smiling. Are they really happy? Are they being brave and in reality holding back tears? Are they scared about what life has given them? Are they barely holding on? How could we know? How could we look at something as simple as a smile and understand what's really going on behind it? It would be impossible to spend your life trying to work out the motivation of every gesture that you encounter. It could, quite literally, drive you mad. We tend not to analyse each encounter and revert to our default attitude of just skimming the surface. But this approach can bring its own problems. A what-you-see-is-what-you-get attitude assumes that we live in a purely physical and tangible reality. We tend to see what we want to see. It's the way we've been taught or told to see. If, for instance, you and four other people saw an accident, you wouldn't necessarily all see the same thing. You would all give five slightly different statements. You would be at different angles, focused on different aspects, or even a differing understanding of what you saw. And that is the difference between us and God. What we see is determined not so much by the things seen, but how we see. I truly believe that the main purpose of Holy Scripture is not just to tell us what to see, but to teach us how to see. In Corinthians, Paul reminds us, we walk by faith and not by sight. All too often, human seeing is based on appearance, base only. God's seeing is inwardly based, even heart-based. For every outward appearance, there is a deeper inner reality. A what you see is what you get where you're living. It's just too small, narrow and limiting. Though it cannot be revealed the fullness of God's presence and life among us. It offers no hope for forgiveness healing or transformation. That way of life shows us the face of this is as good as it gets. But if we want to see life differently and even live life differently, we need to learn to look at our world more through God's eyes. God's seeing reveals that in Christ there is a new creation, 
Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. That's what Jesus' parables are all about. They could be described as the lens that aligns human seeing with God's seeing. They give us a glimpse into God's kingdom, even as we gaze at the normal, ordinary and mundane things in our world. Parables ask us to see things in a different way. But they rarely give us answers. Instead, they sharpen our focus and allow us a deeper vision. Parables insist that we let go of what you see is what you get world and trust in the deeper vision of God. You see, there is always something more going on and that something more is the kingdom of God. Are you ready to look deeper? The dust and the dirt on the narrow road I have had to let go of some hurt To hold on to hope I've watched the sunset before the promise came I have waded through waters wide and walked Grace and peace be with you and keep you in the love of Christ. Father of glory, holy and eternal, look upon us now in power and mercy. May your strength overcome our weakness, your radiance transform our blindness, and your spirit draw us to that love, shown and offered to us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Today, let's open our hearts, eyes and minds and embrace our wonderful triune God through the word of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If we learn to look only a little through God's eyes, how could we resist passing God's peace with everyone we come into contact? So join with us now in passing the peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us pursue all that makes for peace and strengthens our common life. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. The concept of the mustard seed perfectly illustrates how a tiny seed of faith can grow into a faith so enormous it can sustain us a whole life through. The kingdom of God is already planted within creation. God is always at work within our lives. He scatters the seeds of faith within us all. Over time, a seed will do what a seed does. God's kingdom does its kingdom thing, in both cases, grow. We may not understand it, we may not see God's hand, and it may look and seem as if nothing's happening, but slowly there's growth. We sleep, we rise, we wait, we trust, we hope, we pray, we go about our ordinary work life. But you see, within that ordinary life, the life of God has already been planted within all of us. One day, usually when you least expect it, that seed sprouts, it grows, it blooms, the inevitable becomes visible. Our full harvest was always hidden in that seed. It may have been invisible to us, but it was never absent. We now see what has always been, a bloom so perfect and yet so individual, God has produced the most spectacular garden. When we compare our needs to the needs of the world, our lives seem tiny, small, insignificant. Remember the tiny mustard seed. Lux, however, can be deceiving. God's splendid garden, grown from his seeds of faith, have a kingdom to claim. A kingdom that one day will overcome all the evil of the world. In the first century, Palestine mustard was thought of as a weed. It could be that Jesus compares the kingdom to a weed. As weeds can take over, so can the kingdom of God. Weeds can be as beautiful as flowers to a certain eye. You can cut weeds down, you can dig them up, and still they grow, just like the kingdom. God trusts us that at the right time we will overcome all our doubts, all our worries, all our feelings of not being good enough and show him the amazing bloom of faith within ourselves. It could be that we choose to live our life with faith above fear.
Jesus Christ, Saviour and Prince of Peace, still us, O Lord, as you still the storm. Calm us, O Lord, and keep us from harm. Let all the troubles within us cease. Enfold us, Lord, in your deep peace. Amen. We give you thanks for the endurance of the Church, for all unafraid of death as they look to the resurrection. We pray for Christians witnessing amid afflictions, hardships and calamities, for all who are being persecuted for their faith, for those who have suffered beatings, imprisonment or scorn, for all who witness to your love in difficult places. Lord, bless your people and give us life forevermore. Lord of the earth and sea, Protect all who work upon the seas, all fishermen and seafaring peoples. We pray for the Royal Navy and for the Merchant Navy, for those who man lifeboats or work on oil rigs. We pray for all whose lives are endangered by storm and flood. Lord, bless your people and give us life forevermore. We give thanks for all who provide our food, all who protect us and shield us from harm. We pray today for our own homes and loved ones, and we remember any who have recently lost their homes or their livelihood. Lord, bless your people and give us life forevermore. Lord of all power, be with all who are being overwhelmed. Protect all who are in the storms of life. 
all who are facing hardship and danger, all who are having sleepless nights, all exhausted and hungry peoples. We pray for the fearful and the anxious, that the storm-tossed may know your peace. Lord, bless your people and give us life forevermore. We give thanks for all who have passed through life's storms and are now at peace in your presence. We pray for loved ones departed. Lord, bless your people and give us life forevermore. Accept the peace that our Lord gives, the deep peace of the Prince of Peace be within you and about you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And as our Father taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Many thanks to you, our virtual parish, for joining us today. Our thanks to Maureen for reading the gospel and leading us in prayer. All our on-site services are at the time shown on screen. If you're living close to St. Barnabas Church in Gilvacoch, after their Thursday morning service, they have their community shop open with tea and coffee for all. So let's say the grace together. May, May the, the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Maybe what we can take from today's service is that God provides us with that tiny seed and the encouragement to make it grow and blossom into faith. But it's up to us to be open to God's call and be prepared and ready with my foundation. You are all in our prayers. Goodbye. Bye. This house has seen some better days Like the ones before the storm clouds came Rain poured down and hard winds blew Left me holding on for dear life Thought it never passed but then one day I felt that sunlight touch my face All I know is there's only one way How this house survived on Christ the solid rock I stand All of the ground is sinking sand No matter what, I will not be shaken The rains may come, the winds may blow But I will still be still and know This house is built on you, my foundation Got some work to do, but this house is secure Cause it belongs to you On Christ the solid rock I stand All of the ground is sinking sand No matter what, I will not be shaken The winds may come, the winds may blow But I will still be still and know This house is built on you, my foundation